Hi, I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with Todd. Todd, Todd what's your Baker. Last name? Todd Baker. How and are you? Uh, good, I'm good, thank you. We're in sunny Elmhurst today. Todd, what did you bring today? 1955 C Chrysler C300. And that was the first, first one. First of the letter cars, although it didn't have the designation A. They okay. started the next year with B and skipped by me for some reason. So they but went C and then B. All right. There you go. And then how long have you had this one? For about two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. So uh, you're, you're a newbie with the car. Yeah, I'm a newbie. This is a, I bought it from a gentleman in California. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had one of these back in 1968, identical to this except without the uh, wire wheels. And uh, I've now come full circle. So your very first car has now come back home. That's right. How do you feel when you're driving? I, it, I'm young again. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> I'm gonna also I'm gonna grab the cameras I usually do, and uh, today I'm gonna have uh, uh, Todd's gonna stay seated. I'm gonna have Noel help us out, and let's just start with Noel's hat as well as his shirt. He's more than qualified. Noel, tell us. Uh, uh, a little bit about your background so we know why you're you're gonna do the 300. Well, I'm with the Chrysler 300 Club. I've been a member for uh, for the 10 years that I've owned my 60 Chrysler 300F. We're a club of about 800 members uh, domestically here in Canada and uh, as well as members in Australia, New Zealand, France, Italy, Germany. Very heavy uh, membership up in Scandinavia also. So let's take a look right at our featured event. We've got the very first Chrysler 300. So let's kind of move back from it a little bit. And there it is. And why 300? Why did they come out with that number? What, what, meant, what was significant there? This was Chrysler's uh, foray into the sports car market, let's call it. It's the first 300 horsepower American production sedan. So very strong performing car. Chrysler didn't have the financial wherewithal to make a two-seater to compete with the Chevy Corvette and the uh, Ford Thunderbird, so they took a Windsor body, which was the most inexpensive Chrysler, which was devoid of most trim. They added the Chrysler Imperial, the Imperial grill to it, so gave it a very clean look, put a very heavy-duty suspension on it and with a high-performance motor. This was Chrysler's performance car. All right, so this was the race car, and you were sharing with me that this car used to be like a NASCAR as well. This car was uh, campaigned. Uh, Carl Kiekhafer out of Wisconsin, who also started Mercury Marine, campaigned in 1955 and 56, and he won a preponderance of NASCAR races with this car. He's the first who created his team of pit crew. He would truck the cars in, and he'd have their pit crew members all uniformed and highly disciplined, and he just blew all the competition away. Wow. So this is some great history that we're looking at. You can see the gas cap there with your 300. And the Chrysler bolt-on taillights, 56, they started with the more integrated fins, but I've always loved the 55 taillights. I grew up with a 55 Windsor, which again is essentially the same body. Okay, let's take a look inside. Tell me a little bit too about the uh, the door handles you need. The door handles are a one year only, they're a two piece, and women would oftentimes, they would complain because they would break their long nails, fingernails on here, so Chrysler had to redesign these to loop the handle out in 56. But you pull on this and open the door, and there it is. And one big, long door, all vinyl in here. And the interior of the seating was all leather, tan leather, they all came with. The exterior colors were platinum, which is what this color is, this car, and then they also came in black and tango red, which was a bright red. Now the, uh, Black and tango red. It's a little bit more challenging. I lost the leg layer. So and I wasn't quite certain whether I was going to be able to drive it. It's got the, the switches, car. the light switches, and heater switches. And Obviously, we're missing a radio. We, we get are that. We're missing a radio right now. It's got the full complement of gauges and that right hand large dial and the transmission shifter. This is a power flight transmission. It was Chrysler's two speed automatic, which they ran through 1956. 
1956, they did away with that lever and they put a pad over here on the left side in this corner with the push button transmission. They had push button automatic transits from 56 to 64. And you'll notice that this 300 has the 150 mile an hour speedometer too, which was a special feature of 300s only. That's cool. What's the little red light for? The red light is to let you know that you've got your emergency brake on when the car is running. Got it. And this one obviously has power, power steering. steering. They advertise that right in the wheel. Right. Okay, let me just uh, take one kind of overall look again at the interior. All leather, really nicely done. That's kind of what the driver would take a look at. You'll Let's notice that this has power seats, too. Oh, yeah. Very cool. All right, let's uh, take a look under the hood. Okay. Well, hopefully, you know, and there we go. There it is, the 331 cubic inch Hemi. Again, 1955, 300 horsepower, hence the name 300. It's got the dual Carter four barrel carbs and the bat wing carburetors, or I mean air cleaners. I'm going to do a couple of the car shows over in Geneva. Is that a power brake system too? It is. Power brakes. See back. Kelsey Hayes' name stamped on that. So power brake booster. All right. And this still had the six volt electrical system. In 1956, the Chrysler converted all their cars to 12 volt. And we got the generator up top there. We originally thought it was an air condition or uh, air conditioning unit. This unit's kind of, it's different looking because you've got the generator and you've got the power steering pump that's one combined unit. So you don't see those on the later production. Cars. There's your dual carburetors. Yep. And Todd was sharing with me that he went from, from uh, gas station to gas station. <laughs> right, with <laughs> the direct linkage working those four when barrels. He, when he originally had it and that's why as a kid he couldn't afford it. And so. gas was a lot cheaper back then, but still. And still he couldn't afford it. So let's shut the hood. Sure. I'm going to have you sit right with Todd. Hey, Todd, Noel, thanks for being on My Car Story. Hey, thank you very much.